What's up you guys? So I'm here with a new video today and yeah, what you see in front of you, it's time. Uh, it's time to show you guys my, I guess, end of the format, uh, a lot of end of the format fun decks. You guys guessed it. Uh, we're talking Grave Keepers here, you guys. Um, one thing that I always like to do at the end of every Yu-Gi-Oh! season, uh, you get burnt out from playing whatever deck you're playing at Nationals. You're not going to world, so a lot of people get bored with the game. Like, I don't know what else to do. Me, I love that time because it's the perfect, not even so much excuse, but it's the perfect time to just bring back old decks and play decks that you enjoy. And anyone who's been following me here on YouTube for almost five years knows I love Grave Keepers with an undying passion. I always have, always will. And I want to give two shout outs. Uh, one to my good friend uh, Gage, Gage Scapegoat, because we t he's the only person that talks to me about Gravekeepers almost on the daily. Always trying to make the deck better, always trying to make the deck competitive. Uh, the deck, of course, has lost steam over the years, but it recently, with the release of Carter Demise, got its steam back. Uh, the other shout outs to Nick Giles. I finally got to meet him at Nationals, and one of the nicest people I've ever met. One of probably the most skilled Gravekeeper players in the game. Uh, you guys saw him on stream. He's just very, very good with the deck. I talked to him about the deck, the way he built it, reasons behind it, and it was through him and Gage that I was able to arrive at this list. So this is just a fun deck that I'm playing right now. It is actually quite competitive because the Gravekeeper cards are actually still pretty good. So I'm going to get into it for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been a while, but uh, we're here to profile Gravekeepers. Uh, so with the monsters, we're starting with three Commandant. Originally I had two, I bumped it to three just because Necro Valley is basically a win condition. When I played Klee Demise, Necro Valley was like a win condition. So good against Monarch, so good against Cosmo, so good against BA. It was just insane how powerful that card was. So I want to play a, full, a total of six copies. Uh, three Recruiter gets you whatever you need, self-explanatory. And this was the thing that, that this next card was the next thing that I really had to like understand. Uh, Nick played only two Spy, so uh, I tried to figure out, okay, why are we only playing two Spy? The reason we're playing two Spy is over... You know, three spy, two commanded is that, like I said, commanded is your win condition. Spy is slow. Spy is like a gear gear armor. You have to set it, and you know, you're trying to go first. You're trying to resolve demise. It's great, you know, if you set that, and you have a Necro Valley. But with all the drawing that you do in the deck, you are able to get to it. Plus, a lot of times, like, it's just, it's not enough. Getting, getting the two guys out is great, but... I, I had a very hard time, trust me, a very hard time playing only two spy, but through testing it's been really good. Um, will it go up to three? Perhaps, I really don't know, but uh, for now we're just playing the standard. It's about 12 monsters uh, because of Carter Demise's requirements. Uh, two Descendant, uh, yeah, I'm never going back to three, don't worry Gage, it's inconsistent at three. Two Descendant gets you what you need. And then one Heretic, thank you Gage for hooking me up with that, and one Assailant. Uh, that's all. That's it for the monsters. Very simple monster lineup. Uh, you can always get back what you need with Stell, so you don't need any more monsters. On to the spells. Uh, one of the best cards in the deck, obviously. Everyone knows that this card, a lot of people feel this card is going to one or possibly getting banned. Um, I mostly see it going to one, so if it goes to one, I'm still going to play it in the deck. So, yeah, that you combo it with the dualities. I mean, it's just, you know... You guys already know, like when, from when I played Clee Demise, you just get to the cards you need and it's ridiculous. So, just really sped up the engine and helped you get to the cards you need. Of course, the best card in the deck. I love this card. I mean, this is the heart and soul of Gravekeepers. This card is so good. It won me so many games in Nationals because it's just it's just a damn near an auto win against a lot of decks if they can't out it because so many uh, decks rely on the graveyard. So, Valley is just absolutely amazing. I love this card to death. Um, and then the two Stell, obviously, to get back your Gravekeepers. You can blow them up with Descend him, the Recruiters, search out what you need, Stell them back. Pretty ridiculous. It's always been that way. And then uh, the new addition, uh, thanks to Nick, is two Kaiser Coliseums. You want your opponent to play at your pace. You want to tempo the game to where they have to really play at your pace. And Gravekeepers are a pretty slow deck. Um, so uh, Kaiser Coliseum lets you do that. It fucks up a lot of plays. BAs can't go off. Uh, Monarchs can't storm for uh, you know self-explanatory stuff. And through testing, it's actually been pretty good. Having Kaiser with you know with a guy and you know some back rows been enough to you know help you draw in your combo pieces so you can just go off. So I really liked Kaiser Coliseum in the deck. Uh, the last time I played Kaiser Coliseum is when I played Bujin, so uh, it was cool to put the card back in the deck. And uh, the last of the spells is the one of the one Raigeki. Uh, a lot of people like don't like Raigeki in the main deck in game one, but with Necro Valley, it's really good because you have Valley up, you Raigeki them, they're in trouble. So 
I like it. It's a solid one of clear boards. And of course, <laughs> shout out to my brother Jerry for my Duelist League Royal Tribute. Man, this card is, <laughs> you guys already know back in the day when there were three, even at two and at one now, it's still powerful. It's a very powerful one of damn near like a crush card virus. And there's so many monster heavy decks that Royal Tribute just gets you there. Love that card. I, I don't think I can play Grave Keepers without it. Ooh, so excited. I'm damn near knocking my camera around. So yeah, um, yeah, so that's it for the spells and then for the traps. Uh, three Quaking Mirror Force. It's the best Mirror Force. You want to keep a monster on board. Doesn't target. Sets them all in defense. Really good. They can't change their position. Not that great against Monarchs. They can still tribute, but uh, really good against Cosmo. Really good against BA to you know mess them up so their guys die and Valley you know screws them out of their graveyard effects. So a uh, really solid card at three. Um, unfortunately, I can't play Drowning. That's my favorite Mirror Force, but this is my second favorite Mirror Force. Uh, three strike. Uh, you need to play strikes in this deck. Uh, strike is not that good, obviously, when monarchs have uh, returned, but it's good against everything else. Uh, striking graveyard effects, striking anything if you don't have valley up is really critical, and it's enough to just win you the game. Like striking uh, when they go off, like it just it just win you a game. It'll get you there. And then uh, the things I had to pick up were two lose one turns. So I was able to get the original, and I'm happy for that. Uh, just a really solid card uh, in the deck. Nick played Nick played it as well. Uh, just really good. Not that great against, you know, like if you're playing against another Demise deck, obviously. But it's really good. Uh, we rarely have special summon monsters outside of Spy. So, good, really good against Cosmo because Cosmo can be a problem. And having it in defense mode, having them in defense mode lets them, again, they have to play at your pace. So, I really like this card in the deck. It's been testing really well. And then two Rivalry, not three. I played three in Klee. Rivalry just sucks, unfortunately, against uh, Cosmo because of the ruling. If you guys watch my profile, I'll tell you guys the ruling where you, you just have to use the code of ethics that you believe they have a, you know, a valid target to tag out and you can't get a judge to, you know, to, you know, to say that that's true. So Rivalry sucks against Cosmo, but it's good against BA. It's good against Monarchs. It's good against... You know, a lot of decks in the meta, but uh, it's just not that solid against Cosmo. But sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes they just they don't have that answer, and they can't get around it. So uh, I just wanted to keep it at two. I didn't want to have three at any time. And then shout out to Gage. They're there, bro. The two dark bribe. Protection. Uh, that's what it's there for. It's there for Twin Twister. It's there for Strikes. It's there for, you know, pretty much anything. So the card's been solid. The draw doesn't really matter. It mattered when I played Klee because I was trying to out advantage my opponent. But when you're flipping a spy, they got a strike. You dark bribe it. They get a card. You get another guy. You get another guy. Like, you you can go for game. Especially with a lot of the cards I play in the extra deck. So, yeah. So uh, two bribes. Shout out, to, shout out to Gage for that. And then the last one of just one Tarantula. Really good with Necro Valley. Unexpected. It's, just, it's really solid with Valley. A lot of these cards, just like Raigeki, I try to utilize them best with, uh, with Necro Valley. I'm playing six copies of Valley, so I'm going to see that card. And if I don't, well, then the deck breaked. But the goal is to get Valley up ASAP. And then one Emptiness, Blowout card, and the one Warning. I was finally able to upgrade uh, back to an ulti, so it feels good. The deck is 42 cards. Now, before you guys punch me, I was ready to punch myself. I have not played a deck over 40 cards in years. The reason being, and I have talked to both Nick and Gage about this, is that in a deck like Gravekeepers, when it's at 40, you draw a plethora of monsters, you, your hand combinations are just very odd, and I didn't believe that at first, I thought that's BS, I've played decks at 40 cards, I've played, you know, I've even played the 60 card Shadal deck for, for a hot minute, it's like, you know, the difference between 42 and 40 um, to a lot of people is huge because all oh, it messes with your consistency, but in this deck, you know, you have dualities, you have demise, you're getting different hand combinations that make it to where the extra two cards are actually better than having, um, you know, having two less cards because it also makes your side decking much easier. So, um, I wasn't a believer until I really tested it out and my hands have been pretty solid, pretty playable, rarely bricked. I usually had to play every turn. So. For now, 42 cards. Nick played 43. God bless him. I don't know how he did it because, I mean, it's just hard for me to play over 40 cards in a deck. But I'm not playing upstart, so uh, I'm keeping it at 42, and it, it's been solid. So now just uh, to the extra deck real quick. This is my favorite card in the whole extra deck. This is my favorite just combo in the whole extra deck. I even had to put Prime in because I wanted to do it twice. Utopia of the Lightning is the absolute stones. This card is ridiculous. You can just win a game with this card. Um, I love it. There are some very crazy situations where you can have this in trapeze and, well, yeah. 
Yeah, get the <laughs> it's over at that point. So yeah, the Utopia package is just staple in my opinion. I mean, if I could play more Utopias, I mean, I, pr I probably would just because Lightning is insane. Um, and then these, these are just all like rank fours, you guys. I didn't put any rank threes or anything in here. Um, you can play, you know, whatever you want. If I missed any, you can mention. I know there's one I missed that's Downer Magician. I just don't have one, but I haven't even tested with it. So, it, you know, it just depends. But Heartland because of Valley. Rebellion because it can steal games. This can steal a monster and stall out with Kaiser Coliseum. Uh, Castell is Castell. Dweller for, you know, a lot of decks. Diamond Direwolf for spot removal. Cowboy for when you need that extra 800 push. Uh, this is one of my favorites, Gaga Samurai, just 3,800. Don't know if a lot of people know that, but guy can attack twice. Like I said, I'm just trying to, you know, my extra deck, if I go to the extra deck, and honestly, I don't go to the extra deck that much, but if I do, I'm trying to put game on board. 3,800, that's almost half their life. Uh, this is game, if you can if you can get it. I mean, if you get these two, I mean, whew, then you were really ahead that game. Um, yeah, you know, you can play it because of spellcasters. Uh, Gem Knight Pearl is amazing with lose one turn. Self-explanatory, Frieza will always be good. In the deck, Beater 2600. Uh, I put Karga Goron, I guess, just to protect Emptiness and Valley. I'm just trying to protect that. And lastly, the Key Beetle. Same thing. Most people do Key Beetle Emptiness. I do Key Beetle Valley because Valley is like a win. It is like an Emptiness, honestly. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Uh, it feels great to pick up these cards again, to pick up the Gravekeepers and, you know, just really, you know, just play a deck that I like. Uh, I've already gotten my invite for Nationals, so I'm going to be playing decks. I like until we have our list and then it's you know it's back into serious mode uh, for the game but I mean for now I'm playing a lot of fun decks I'm playing Mighty Morphin Power Rangers you guys real talk I've been playing Mighty Morphin Power Rangers great Magnus dot deck uh, just to, you know as a side project I got a lot of side projects this was always one it was just in the vault till it was time to play it again so uh, really glad that I could bring this to you guys I hope you guys enjoyed it any suggestions would be great any changes any additions whatever uh, you guys think um, if you don't agree with 42 cards don't play 42 cards I, I had a very hard time. You guys don't even know that's why this took so long to finally get to you guys. I've had the demises for a long time. Uh, I just had to pick up lose one turns. I could have borrowed them, but it was just mentally saying, all right, I'm going to play 42 cards. I know a lot of people are like, 42 cards is nothing, blah, blah, blah. Trust me, it is. Uh, when you've been playing 40 for a long time, it is. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. If there's any other deck profiles you'd like to see, let me know. If I can get to the cards, I'll get to them, and I'll uh, put my own spin on it, or I'll, you know, I'll make it the way you guys want to see it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.